<clears throat> Hi, everybody. Woo, it's me, Lisa T, coming at you with some positive energy. I think I'm a little crooked here. Crooked? A little, we need to, I, I'm going to rephrase that. That's negative thinking, negative speaking. I'm a little, I need more balance here. There we go. That's a better way to say it. There, I think that's a little more balanced. Okay, me, Lisa T, coming at you with some positive energy, reading The Language of Letting Go by Melody Beattie. Woo! You know, all we have is today. All we have is today. Um, all we have is this moment. I, um, I'm so grateful for all this work that, um, that has been brought into my life um, to help me be um, better, stronger, um, evolving all the time, learning all the time. Um, yesterday, I like dug into my program like crazy, not like crazy, I dug into my program with a with a determination and um, you know, uh, higher powers are at work and higher powers show up. When we care for ourselves, when we love ourselves, um, we allow a channel of love to also, I think, enter into our experience um, and into our minds. It's all in the mind, it's all in the mind. Everything's an illusion, everything's like, it's all, um, you know, you are the universe. Um, you are your universe. You are your your experience. So um, it's really important to know what's going on inside. And this work helps us to clear all that stuff so that we can have a like really clear channel of just awesomeness. And um, yeah, it's all about letting go. It's about an undoing. It's about a removal. Like um, you know, I, I, in the past, I remember like. Uh, at one point in therapy, my, my, my therapist was suggesting I do this or do that, like adding things in. And, I, and, and, and the recovery program is about a removal. It's about getting, getting back down to basics, getting back down to our cores, at all this life conditions, life's concepts, life, um, you know, other people's thoughts. Our parents' thoughts were like imprinted on us our, and, and, and instilled in us. Um, their parents' thoughts, but like there's generational stuff going on here. So recovery is all about undoing and getting back to your, your own pure source, your own pure um, God consciousness, higher power consciousness, whatever, um, and, and, and back to love, back to love. <laughs> okay, so um, we are reading 22. It's been one month. I think I started June 22. It's been one month since I restarted this. This is exciting. Okay, so July 22. Learning to trust again. That's where I'm at right today. Just remembering to trust the process. I was in a lot of, I was, I had, I was under stress for like a week and a half. Some things were coming into my life that was causing me stress. And when I'm feeling stressed out, I um, can easily get in my head. Um, Thank goodness I work a program and I can like undo that. It took me some time this time because the momentum, I have to gotta be careful too. We gotta nip things in the bud immediately or else things pick up momentum. Um, that could be a thought, that could be a belief, that could be a cir circumstance. You know, we also gotta deal with things in the moment so that things don't build up um, and um, learning to trust again. So, uh, you know, I remember in therapy, my, I said to my therapist, I want to give her a shirt, trust the process. She used to always say to me, trust the process. That was long before I was in recovery. And um, that was part of my recovery. And trust the process. We gotta trust the process. Like everything that's coming at you is coming at you for your higher good. If you can instill that in your brain, I've been mantering that too. Like I've been trying to instill that. That just came to me. Um, uh, it's it's been building. It's been growing over time. Anyways, um, but everything is happening for your higher good. Trust this process. This process. So even when there's a sticky moment coming at you, or a, a tough moment, or a stressful moment, um, knowing that you know what something good is going to come of this. Telling yourself, reminding yourself that something good is going to come of this. I just got to do the next right thing. Do the next right thing. Continually doing the next right thing, and um, and trust the process. And and Revelation comes. So, trust, learning to trust again, July 22nd. Many of us have trust issues. Well, this is when the, I'm talking about trusting again, like trusting the process, but learning to trust um, people, trusting what they say. I, you know, I, 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 from my childhood trauma stuff, like trusting when someone says um, that they're, you know, that they have my best interest at heart or they're looking out for me or they love me even, or, you know, like I'm like, mm, do you really, do you really? Yeah, there's a, there's a, I, I have trust issues because of what I went I'm, you know, that's, that's been, that's really come a long, 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 long way. Um, it's about putting in the right people in your life, um, and learning to trust again. Um, let's go there though. I'm talking too much before the reading. <laughs> okay. I'm just stoked. Okay. Many of us have trust issues. Some of us tried long and hard to trust untrustworthy people. There you go. That's what I was just talking about. I was trusting on people who were in my life that, um, 
were placed there, not drawn there, and um, and I couldn't trust them. Um, but it was it was in a situation where I was like supposed to trust them. It felt like so. Some of us tried long and hard to trust untrustworthy people over and over again. We believed lies and promises never to be kept. That was what happened to me. There was lies and promises that were never kept. Some of us tried to trust people for the impossible. For instance, trusting a practicing alcoholic not to drink again. <laughs> so so code, this, mainly this is about codependence. Um, uh, code, there's a codependence anonymous um, groups and stuff. So um, codependents are typically, that when that was founded, it was for people who were living with um, alcoholics. So... Um, that's why that line is there because they were it, it was traditionally made for people living with an alcoholic um so um they those people would probably trust that their alcoholic person who said oh honey i'll, I'll never do it again <laughs> they they trusted them not that that, that wouldn't happen but the, the person couldn't they had alcoholism healthy drink so anyway some of some of us tried to trust people for the impossible for instance trusting a practicing alcoholic not to drink again some of us trusted our higher power inappropriately we trusted God to make other people do what we wanted, then felt betrayed when that didn't work. Well, that's that's wanting your will, not God's will. So that's, yeah, anyways. Some of us were taught that life, life couldn't be trusted, that we had to control and manipulate our way through, right? That control and manipulation thing. That control stuff is really cunning. It's cunning, baffling, powerful, as they say. And manipulation, and until you're really self-aware, um, you might not, I, I remember like, six years ago like saying to someone oh my god i tried to control that situation i recognized it it's it's a really it's a subtle foe uh that control thing everybody's got a little bit of it little bit of it um i think in some way shape or form so um but yeah people who have any kind of trauma or any issues addiction issues and stuff um it, they don't even know it but you're trying to control and manipulate make the situation i would do it in, in scenes where i would because I, I wanted to feel so safe and protected so i would think i could control the environment the people, places, and the things around me so that I would always feel safe, protected, and loved. Um, and I would do little weird things to, to mentally think I was controlling it. But we never are. Nothing's in our, really, really nothing's in our control. The one thing you do have control over is being able to take pauses and, like, and, and, and respond to the world instead of reacting to the world. So, uh, some of us were taught that life could, couldn't be trusted, that we had to control and manipulate our way through. Most of us were taught... and. Taught is a key word here. Again, like I said, like we take on our parents' stuff and our family stuff when we're young. Um, so we're taught things. We're taught things. We're taught conditions. We're taught concepts. Um, none of that is just like none of that is reality. That's just like one person's experience of life. So, um, and our experiences are all seen through our own filters of past. So um, we're taught these things. So most of us were taught inappropriately that we couldn't trust ourselves taught that you couldn't trust yourself that's a kicker man when you can't when you think you can't trust yourself i've gone through that recently i was like why did, why did i doubt myself there why did i doubt myself there in the past i was like i don't know how to make decisions i don't know how to make choices um i couldn't trust myself way in the past um because nothing when well, nothing would turn out good so I, I taught myself i can't trust myself i can i can definitely trust myself these days with a lot of that's a lot of work has been put in so many of us were taught inappropriately that we couldn't trust ourselves in recovery, we're healing from our trust issues. We're learning to trust, again, we're learning to trust ourselves, trust the people we put in our lives, trust higher power, trust life circumstances, right? Trusting all different types of things. So we're learning to trust again. The first lesson is trust in this. We can learn to trust ourselves, most important. Most important like the self-love, most important also to trust yourself, trust your gut. Learning to trust that gut. We, you know, mo most of us have a really good gut instinct, right? The gut is the second brain of the body. So um, our guts tell us something, but what happens is we go from our guts, we're like, oh, that didn't feel good. And then we go up into our heads and then we make a mess of it um, with thoughts instead of just like trusting that gut. And then we like rationalize our way through something or um, what's the other word? Uh, anyways, yeah. So so we get into our heads and then we, we, we end up mistrusting the gut, that first gut instinct, but we can get back to that. So we need to learn. So the first lesson in trust is trust ourselves. Let it begin with me. If we have trust issues, we've got to trust ourselves. If we're finding trouble with like um, things, we, we got to turn it back on us our, ourselves first. Like, not turn it back on ourselves, but bring it bring it back to ourselves first. Like, what's my part in this? What am I doing? It's like, tr so I can trust, we can't give away what we don't have. 
So if I don't have trust in myself, how could I ever trust you? If I don't have love for myself, how could I ever love you? If I don't have um, patience with myself, how could I ever have patience with the world? If I don't have um, tolerance for making, mis you know, for myself or making a mistake or fumbling or whatever, like if I don't have, if I don't have it for myself, how can I give it away? What we don't, we can't give away what we don't have. So we got to learn to trust ourselves. We can be trusted. If others taught us we cannot trust ourselves, it was a lie. I've spoken about in a lot of videos about, you know, when I started this journey that there was this little thing on my shoulder that would say, no, Lisa, but you're no good. Or no, yeah, but Lisa, you really screwed it up. And I had to, in the mornings, like when I first started my self-love journey, in the mornings I'd have to go, no, not today, little man. I am loving. I am, I am love. I am, you know, I'd have to like mentor some like positive words. So we have to say no to that. It's a lie. It's a lie. So if others have taught us we cannot trust ourselves, they were lying. So you can call out liar if your mind starts to say, yeah, but Susan, yeah, but Joe, you're, you're really not that great. Lie. Call it out. <laughs> so if others taught us we cannot trust ourselves, they were lying. Addictions and dysfunctional systems make people lie dysfunctional systems and trust me there's a lot of dysfunction in this world so there's a lot of lies out there about who you are who you truly are and and what this is all about so but and addictions can lie to us too right um because it, it causes this denial piece right that's a main thing in, in addiction so addictions and dysfunctional systems make people lie we can learn to appropriately trust our higher power not to make people do what we want them to do, but to help us take care of ourselves. Help us to respond appropriately to all situations, people, places, and things. Help us take care of ourselves. Help us love. We're, we can't control anybody, can't control anything, but you can take care of yourself through how life comes at you. So, uh, yeah, we can trust we can trust our higher power to not to make people do what we want them to, but to help us take care of ourselves and to bring about the best possible circumstances at the best possible times in our lives. Everything is for your higher good. This is all for your best interest. Everything that's happened to you right now. We can trust the process of life and recovery. We do not have to control, obsess, or become hypervigilant. Ooh, I was just talking to my best friend about this hypervigilance thing last night. Hypervigilance, that's a trauma response. Um, I went, when I worked in a restaurant uh, with, my, with my lifelong friend, I would like have to lay down on the ground at night and like look across if, if I could see any specks of dust. Like there was this hypervigilance to make everything perfect. I was so hard on myself, so every hair had to be in place. Every, you know, like everything, the way I looked had to be perfect. The way the floor was washed had to be perfect. Everything in my home had to be perfect. I had to do a rampant cleaning once a week because it all had to be perfect. If the if they were coming in to check my smoke detectors, the the landlords or something, I had to make everything perfect. There was this hyper vigilance to make everything perfect so that I would feel okay. I thought if everything is perfect out there, then I'll be okay. That's a that's definitely a trauma thing, but it's also part of um, recovery. So. When you recognize, so we do not have to control, obsess, or become hypervigilant. So if you recognize you're controlling, obsessing, thinking something over and over and over and over, right? Um, um, and then becoming hypervigilant. So so being like really on, like really like looking for every little detail, looking for where this is going wrong or where it's going right. Or like just instead of just like experiencing it all, if you're doing those things, we can just simply ask a higher power to remove them. So, but recognizing it, awareness is key at first. So, wow, I got lots to say this one. Sorry, it's taking so long. So, okay, we can learn to appropriately trust our higher power, not to make people do what we want them to, but to help us take care of ourselves and to bring about the best possible circumstances at the best possible times in our life. We can trust the process of life and recovery. We do not have to control, obsess, or become hypervigilant. We may not always understand where we are going or what's being worked out in us, but we can trust that something good is happening, like I said. What, when we learn to do this, we are ready to learn to trust other people. So you got to do that first and then we can trust others. So trust what's happening, trust the circumstances, trust higher powers, trust yourself. Um, and then we can learn to trust other people. When we trust our higher power and when we trust ourselves, we will know who to trust and what to trust. Who to trust and what to trust that person is for. So people come into your lives for certain reasons, right? People, oh sorry, perhaps we always did. We just didn't listen closely enough to ourselves to trust what we heard. So we've always known, but we just didn't listen closely enough. That's what silence, that's why meditation is so important, it's to get silent, to get out of this and get into the heart so that we ha we're into the knowings, the knowings, not the maybes, not the beliefs, not the concepts, but the knowings. So 
Perhaps we always did. Perhaps we always knew, but we just didn't listen closely enough to ourselves or trust what we heard. Here's your prayer for today. Today, I will affirm that I can learn to trust appropriately. I can trust myself, my higher power, and recovery. I can learn to appropriately trust others too. Amen. Thanks for watching. Love you all.